Hello guys, uh, my name is Dr. Laurent Gannery. I'm one of the OMFS surgeons working in Henri Mondor Hospital in Paris, France. And a lot of you in fact asked me to do a video to uh, highlight a little bit better the different publication we have done on the topic of the open source software uh, for 3D modeling and VSP uh, in our specialty. And in fact, we are using it daily now for all the indication. And this video is about a mandibular reconstruction using a fibula free flap. Basically, when you are in your Blender software, what I like to do is I just import the STL files and I already have my skull and my fibula uh, prepared that you can see in a, another video. So when you import your object, you hit Shift and C button of your key keyboard and you can see them. Obviously, they are really big. So I select one, I hit the end button and I'm just gonna, going to move um, the, um, the size to 10. Uh, and like that, it's going to be 10 times smaller, but in fact, this size will be exactly the size coming from the CT scan of um, the size of the object coming in a centimeter. So in fact, for 3D printing, it's already ready. And by chance, this size also match with um, the dimension of the working space in Blender software. So I hit again Shift C, and you can see compared to the size of the of the of the place I want to work with, uh, it's good. So then, what I do is I'm moving my object, it in G and X, for example, and trying to place it at the center of um, the working space. G Y here, but you can see my gravity center is there. I want that in the center of the object to trying to do some rotation. So I hit Shift Control Alt and C with my two hands, a little bit complicated. And then you can move the origin to geometry and you see it moves there. Like that I can do uh, some rotation to put the two infraorbital rim, for example, flat like that, I like it. Uh, R and Z, rotation and Z. I'm trying to put maybe the chin in the midline, GX, it's a little bit better. Uh, you can see the Vomer is not really there, so maybe that will be in fact uh, more accurate. Uh, let's move there. Okay, uh, and the Frankfurt uh, plane is pretty good. Maybe a little bit of rotation like that. I'm happy with that. So now what I want is just to extract the mandible. If I'm lucky, this mandible will be um, without any contact to the maxilla and the TMJ, the condy, will not touch the, the uh, skull base. So by just, um, I put the C uh, key and I have a circle tool, I just you know grab as much as I can here and here. Um, like that, I'm going to select a more by by just you know hitting the control and plus of my keyboard and that will be uh, enough and like that you see i can select uh, from a neighbor uh, mesh uh, and i will see if it's fusing or not so control and plus of your keyboard and obviously i'm not lucky there is a fusion here i nearly have my condyle so it's good nearly have my condyle let's do that a little bit more obviously there is a fusion here also and here so then I just remove them like that. So better to do it with the full translucy there. Okay. But that's is enough to see my you know my fibula limits. That's my only goal here. Sorry. There and there. I'm pretty happy here. Maybe yeah, that will be enough, no problem. And just the, the two of the maxilla, or just the maxilla. Let's remove these guys. And you see the fusion was there. Um, and that will be it. So now I have my mandible. And what I, I can do is to export it and make it a, a new object. So now what you do is you just hit your P button and go to selection and you have your mandible. So I hit H to hide this guy. I am happy, I have what I want. And now what I do is I select the outside aspect of it because when you see inside, there is a lot of stuff and I don't want this stuff inside the mandible like the, 
a cancellous bone and the nerve because when I'm gonna cut with my plane, um, it's not gonna understand where is the outside and from the inside. So I just do a big circle and I just move a little bit like that and select, select, select very fast. Huh? It's a very fast uh, step. But like that, I only select the outside shell of my object, my mandible here. And that will be enough. And then I, I just extract that, repair the hole, obviously, because there will be plenty of hole, obviously, inside. And so P, selection. OK, so you see there's plenty of small hole. But when you see this object, you see inside all of this scrap is now removed. I remove this guy. So now I have, yeah, my mandible. And so I export this mandible in the desktop. So export as STL. Don't forget to hit the selection only button here. Um, let's call that uh, mandible. Yep. And in my desktop. Okay, selection only, export. I remove this one. I shrink my, uh, my, uh, stuff here and I go to directly to netfab that open very fast normally and uh, I just use the automatic repair button so this red cross go to automatic repair execute and it's done apply the repair remove all parts maybe do it again because there is still some red stuff but sometimes it doesn't yeah he's not able to do more than that but it will be enough to print and do everything and I export as STL, the mandible repair twice. I optimize all this stuff, it's done, and I export. And then I kit, and I don't save. So then I go back to my Blender, I use the import STL. Sorry, I just missed the import STL. And I go to my mandible repair repair, it's exactly in the same position. Okay, so if you uh, go and, and you see the maxilla, it's exactly in the same position. Okay, so now what I do, I need to design my surgical guide, right? So it's a case of squamous cell carcinoma, whatever. Um, so I need to cut, let's say, the midline or close to the midline and to the angle region. So I want a surgical guide that will grab the basilar aspect of the mandible because I'm going to go by the neck. Um, so I place my stuff here and I just create a cube, really easy step. Then what I usually do is I go to my tool, I go in this uh, mode, uh, the edit mode, and I use the loop and cut slide. And you see you have something at pair, and by just um, moving my, my third button on my on my mouse, I can create like the new plane, and it's easier to design a surgical guide. Then I like to work by face, so I just do that, and I move by Z, and like that I grab the basilar aspect. I just move by you know the axis and like that i grab my basilar aspect maybe a little bit more like that i'm happy and that is very sick uh, i shrink the guide because i don't need to have uh, that amount of guide okay but you see yeah, i did a small mistake maybe it's better to just you know take all of them shrink all of them yeah and now let's see i think that pretty decent. Um, I will just, you know, shrink that. I don't need to go as high as that. Same here. I'm gonna shrink that too. So up. Okay. And let's do it again. Shrink that. Okay. That will be better. And we are pretty done. Uh, uh, maybe I would like to have more, you know, surface. So I just can do that. That's fine. Surgical guide is still, you know, uh, strong. Here you can see it's gonna. It's a little bit thin. Huh? So let's make it a little bit more bulky. Something like that, same shape. It's pretty decent there. Maybe just this space here, a little bit more. Okay. So then you need to create your plan, okay? 
So by doing that, you create your plan, you do a rotation of 90 degrees and you hit enter. Then you just move by S for sizing, you make it bigger and obviously I cut everything here. Um, and then because you move the size, you need absolutely right now to go to object, apply and scale. This stuff will allow your scale, as you can see here, uh, multiplying only by six times the size to go back to one and like that all the, uh, for the deformation, rotation, movement you will do with this plane will be on a scale of one. So if you want to move one centimeter, it will move one centimeter and not six centimeter. So that's extremely important to do with your plan. And here I select my plan, I exclude the plan and look on the left uh, lower corner, you will see I want to move it from 0 0.09, nearly 0 0.10, so that's good here. And it means um, my plan is a little bit less than one millimeter. By doing that, I know that my saw will, will enter into this uh, slot with a, a lot of uh, 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 friction and it's very good to be precise. So now if I'm going here, I like to move it on the tooth like that. I will just need to remove the tooth and that's it. And then I create a double of this plan because there is one plan for the surgical guide and one plan for the mandible. So let's create a, a modification of this plane to be adequate to the surgical guide, meaning that like that, I will not cut my surgical guide completely. So that, that will be nice. You see, I have a, a plan that can cut the mandible from everywhere. Uh, if I move my saw uh, in an inferior position like that, it will be good. There is enough plastic to be strong enough, so that's perfect. And and here we go. So then I like to import uh, a screw. So I have a library, and you see in the library. So in my in my computer, I have a modelization library, and in my library, I have a lot of stuff. You know, folder for one. Uh, BSSO, already uh, a surgical guide for the fibula, everything. I mean, uh, uh, already my guide for mandible uh, that are already created, and sometimes it's easier to grab them and modify them, and it's not only done. And here you see I have something for a screw that is 2 millimeter and 3 millimeter of diameter for the head, and it's usually the screw I use. So I, I import that, and basically what it is, you see that here it's just a small screw, two cylinder of diameter two and three millimeter, um, and like that I can impact that. So Shift Control Alt C to put the geometry in the center of the object, and by just some rotation I like to just put my screw, and it's done. So you see I like to impact the head of the screw in the surgical guide, and like that I can see yeah it's going to be in the mandible. Obviously, I like to put them in the part of the mandibles that will go away in the osteotomy. And I just hit Shift and D and I just duplicate them. And I let's put two of them and that will be more than enough to hold it with a good... Uh, uh, I mean, the surgical guide will be strong enough. And that's it. I have my plan. So, so now we can just, you know... Uh, impact everything everybody and like that the, 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 the guide is ready so first I go to this uh, tool and then I had a modifier called boolean and the boolean I like is a difference so I copy 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 uh, to have multiple of them because there is multiple objects to do that to do um, and the first I do usually is the mandible like that I know if there is any problem so the mandible I eat dead and you see it's already done so that's good um, then I do, uh, for example, my screw, so screw 1 and screw 2, okay, and you see uh, the head also is impact, like that you screw the head and it will lock, and then I impact this guy um, to finish the job, and obviously it's there, okay, um, so I apply everybody, remove the excess, and that's it, you have your surgical guide done as you can see here. Huh? So if I move, you see every, everything is beautiful and that's what you're gonna print. Okay, so I just control Z replace it to be precise and I just, you know, 
hide everybody by with the H and you have that. So obviously I'm going to do the same step here to cut there. So you can obviously make the um, the stuff, I mean the video move forward because it's going to be exactly the same stage. But uh, if you want to see, here we go. So my uh, object will be here. Um, I will uh, move and create multiple loops like that. Uh, what is the best? I think the best will be this way. Um, and then uh, I go by face. I like to grab at the posterior aspect of the mandible here, as the inferior aspect here, and then it will be enough. Um, okay. So basically what I'm gonna do is uh, I select that, that, uh, up, select everything I don't want like that and I move them backward a little bit because I don't need to be you know as aggressive as that so let's create something not too complicated a nice angle a nice angle here same here nice angle here all right pretty good i like it uh okay i will have everything and i will be able to clip it at the posterior aspect so obviously that is the most important part to modify here and here okay so that's good i need to obviously match the inferior aspect of the mandible um let's move that inside oops so you see i grab on the other aspect so let's move that inside a little bit yeah like that everything is destroyed okay everything is hide inside mm -hmm. let's go and create a big guide on the inferior aspect okay i don't need that amount of guide here and obviously that will be enough so just need to move it a little bit there don't need him to be too much there it's fine like that it will be flat i will not hit my retro mandible or vein when i will try to you know put him inside the uh, the patient okay uh, and then i will make it a little bit more flat here no need to be that big here's the same jx no need to be that big and it's starting to be decent there and that inside the bone like that it's not a problem and there let's be like that but i think it's too you know uh, not enough robust so let's make a bigger part here yes and like i like it because i have the shape i can do that i will not be too much uh in this aspect because otherwise it's difficult to clip and I, you know it's nice and soft so that i'm i'm pretty happy so then it's exactly the same. So you deselect your object. I'm here, I create my plane. Uh, I do a rotation like where I want it to cut. So something like that. I scale it with S. So obviously, oof, that's very big. So that will be more than enough. Um, and then immediately I object apply scale. And by N I see scale is return to one and then i extrude my object and i look on the left uh, lower uh, part of the screen and i'm trying to go to 0 0.09 yeah something like that is good and so if you want to be sure uh, where you need to cut so obviously that was already a discussion uh, a plan i already you know think previously but 
my limit of the mucosal invasion is here. So I know that I'm at least yeah, one centimeter. It's really nice. So you go to uh, grease pencil and ruler. And, um, can I, yeah, maybe I can preserve a little bit more bone and be more, you know, careful with that. Um, you can cut the coronoid if you are concerned, but it's a fibular reconstruction with a major uh, 2.0 recon bar. So definitely uh, it's not uh, needed. Uh, it's not like a marginal mandibulectomy of this space where you need to cut it because you are afraid of a fracture. And basically, uh, I duplicate my plane, hide one of them, and this plane will be used for the surgical guides. So I go here. Uh, now it's not, you know, straight. So I need uh, to uh, select my plane here and move the axis there to be exactly in the size of a plane. So there is another trick. Uh, it's to hit Control, Alt, and Space button. And as you can see here, it's automatically go exactly where I want. And, and now I can just put G and Z and Z again, and I will have exactly the good uh, orientation to, to slide my plane. Obviously, I will go here. It will be easy to cut in this uh, position. And here we go. I have everything. Uh, I can cut everything. And my surgical guide is robust enough. Uh, then I just use one of the screw, shift D, the screw of the other guy, and I rotate that to make the screw go in the good direction. Well, usually uh, I don't use uh, this screw, um, so I would just put one in this uh, position here. Uh, what you can do is just, um, you can just, uh, use uh, your finger and hold it. You can mark uh, your osteotomy plane and then complete it after removing the surgical guides. It's perfectly fine. But anyway, in case, we never know, this screw will be there. So now, the same, Boolean, uh, with a modifi modifi modifier, sorry, difference, copy, copy, copy. And then I copy from the mandible. So that's very nice. I would just have to remove this piece. Uh, the plane and the screw. So let's do the screw. Yeah, there. Beautiful. And the plane. Beautiful. Okay. Apply, 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 and remove the extra. My surgical guide is done. So then I remove that and that, and you can see, yeah, it's going to be enough. And it's going to be good. Okay. All right. Then, uh, so I, I have something to do, I remember, yes, to remove this. So that will be good. Um, so I just, you know, hit control, control and the plus of my keyboard, and I select that, and I just remove it, and that's done. Okay, so now you have all of your stuff. You can name this guy in your list as, so rename as a, uh, surgical guide one, so in French guide de coupe, GDC, and uh, this other guy, where is it? up there, rename guide de coupe surgical guide two. All right, okay, and so now let's cut our mandible. So that is the upper part, I don't need it. Mandible repair, okay. That is good, and then I need my plane, so the big one there, and my second plane, so not this one, but this one, yeah, the big one. And then we do exactly the same, I cut just the mandible, so I select this guy, boolean, difference, okay, I do it twice, two plane, cut with the number one, cut with the number two, I hit that button, and you can see it's already cut, so I apply and apply, and that's it. So then I just, same situation, I select this part, Control and plus, okay, it's nearly seen done, and I just make two objects. So then you have to understand that if you use this plane um, and you cut it there, but then you miss, even if it's one millimeter, it's still one millimeter, you, you lose some bone here. So you need to move your plane, 
uh, to make, make the plan exactly where the, the, the bone cut of the native mandible will be. Uh, otherwise, your reconstruction will be a little bit um, um, out of, of the plan. And I think that's wha what you know, some engineers uh, are doing, uh, usually because you know, on professional software, it's also put your plan there, and then you have a space, and then in fact, you have to gap this space by moving the native mandible. And then you have not a very uh, good correlation in your post-op results and you don't understand why. So basically what I do is I take the plane here, I hit Control add space to move the plane here, and then I just go on the full object, like that, the full object move, and then I just hit um, uh, JZZ and I can move it. And you see, until I see up the bone here. So then I go here, and I do the same, G, Z, Z, until I see there the bone. And I know that all of this space, so one millimeter, will be one millimeter of fibula and not one millimeter of nothing. Um, so I do the same here. Um, I have one face, perfect. Control Alt Space, perfect. And, and then I hit uh, Tab to have the whole object. And I do the same, G, Z, Z. And I move, move, move until up. Oh, I see the bone, and here I see I'm really at the edge of the bone. Really at the edge of the bone. That's perfect. Okay, and now I'm ready to reconstruct my mandible with um, the fibula. So I'm gonna hide uh, um, the two plan right now. I'm gonna put the mandible that I want to repair and match, and I'm going to go to the grease pencil ruler protractor. And hitting that, I'm going to create my two fragments because here I want to create two fragments. So I hit control and put the second one. All right. So this line needs to be at the, you know, the middle part of the central part of the fibula. So this is why it's high like that because usually, you know, my fibula will be here at the maximum of, uh, of width. And so I'm going to make everybody match. Uh, here it's going to be, obviously needs to match to the native mandible here. And when I look down in, a, in this view, that will need to be something like here. That will need something like here. And that will be something like here. I prefer, oh, that's, you know, the angle is too flat here, so it doesn't, you know, reconstruct the chin as I as I would like for my patient. So I move it a little bit, knowing that I never go below three centimeter for multiple reasons. The first one is that if you think about it, the osteotomy plane will be like that and like that. So the lingual aspect of my fragment will be shorter than the buccal aspect. So on the lingual aspect will be my, my vascularization. So my fragment in fact will be vascularize by less than 2.5 centimeter if I go below this 3 centimeter and that will be too short to have a vascularized graft so that will be not good at all so I'm going there so I need unfortunately to match my fragment to this need and it's a balance for the cosmetic and just the success of the surgery for my patient but I think that will be enough. I will have a small spur here, but the patient is a little bit obese, so that will be fine, and there it will be enough. So, like that, I have my <clears throat> length of reconstruction. And when I want to, uh, because I want to remember this uh, number, I just and hit enter, and it's saved. So now, what, what I'm going to do, I hide everything. I hit shift C. Uh, obviously, I need to hide also the fibula. Shift C, like that my 3D cursor is in the center of the scene. And I'm going to create a new uh, object that, that is called an armature. So basically what I want to do is to align that to the um, Y uh, axis. So what I do is I hit R for rotation, 90 for the number of 90 degree, and X, like that my armature is already uh, on the Y axis because I, I like to work this way. The angle and the sheen will be this way. So I like to have my fibula starting the same way. Uh, and then in fact, in edit mode, what I do is I just put the number of the uh, grease pencil. So for, if you go to ruler protector, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, highlighting again. So 4.57, all right. 
So I go to n, this z1, 4.57, hit enter, beautiful. And then I, I, hit, I hit e for extrude, and I create a second fragment, right click of my mouse, like that this fragment exists, but it's just a smaller, and the roller projector is 3.05. Three point zero five. It will be sixty two and three, so seven. And I need enter, and that that I have my two fragments now. Um, all right. Then I need to create a plan to cut in between the two fragments of the fibula, because I have already my plan of the osteotomy prepared here and my plan of the osteotomy prepared here. But I need a plane here to cut both of them. So I go to uh, again the object mode. I remove the selection here and I create a plan. Uh, this plan is rotate at 90 on X to be aligned with everybody. I go on uh, top view, like that it's easier. It Z, like that I can see the uh, connection between the two bone. And I just move G on Y, my plan to match there. And then it's like the usual creation of a plane. S to size it bigger. Uh, automatically, after go to object, apply and scale, like that you scale or 111 again. And then in edit mode, extrude and look on the lower left corner, 0 0.09 or close, that will be perfect. Okay, so now I have a plane. I just go again on the top view to make sure I'm in between, you see, just in between there will be better so every detail matter and then i need to link this plan to make it move with this bone as this bone so for example when i go in armature right now and i move this the plane doesn't move right and if i move that obviously the armature move entirely but not the plane so you select your plane and your armature but in object mode like that you hit Control P and you go with automatic weights. So now this plane is linked, but it doesn't know exactly how it needs to respond yet. So you go to edit mode, selecting your plane fully. And like that, you go to this tool and you see that on the plane is register bone, the number one and the number two, bone and zero, zero, one. So now I explain to the plane that it needs to be assigned to both of these bone as this one and a sign. You really need to hit that button. If it was a plane here and a third bone there, even four and whatever, I will select this bone, the number third, and I will set remove because I don't want when the, these bone move, the plane change, right? So if I go now to armature, the pose mode, um, and I move it, you can see that the plane changing everything as here. Okay, and that's how it works. So if I link my fibula now to this bone, obviously the fibula will, will react this way. So now I need my fibula. So let's see my fibula where it is, it there. Okay, so I was obviously uh, tired, so I didn't you know clean the fibula. So it's at the good size, obviously, right now. So I just move the fibula in the middle of my scene like I like to do. Hop, there, here we go. Uh, I hit uh, Shift, Control, Alt, C just to put the origin to geometry of my fibula right now. And I will see if I'm lucky by, you know, selecting uh, a decent part of the fibula bone and the pedicle that go with it here. If I just select in like that, I will not grab the part of tibia bone I left. So control and plus of your keypad. And let's see. So the proximal aspect doesn't grab the tibia. I'm lucky there. And the distal one doesn't grab the tibia. I'm very lucky. So I hit P. And now I have my full fibula without my tibia and the pedicle included. Okay. And so basically when you are here now, you need to uh, repair your fibula as usual. So you uh, export your uh, fibula object into your uh, desktop. FFF 
netfab. Let's go again. Automatic repair, execute, apply repair, remove all part. Now we export as STL to my, my stuff. Yeah, yes, so save. So where is it? Here, FFF repair. And so now import, repair. So now I just, you know, camouflage by H the, the plan to see better. Now what I want is to create some rotation and I want obviously my pedicle at my angle. So the angle will be here, that's the chin here. And so the pedicle will be there, so that's fine. Um, I'm putting myself in a view, a right view for example. And if I cover there, I don't see anything. So when I select the armature, I select the X-ray button here. And like that, when you do that, you see. And you can, you know, uh, enter, I mean, put the fibula bone exactly like you like. So because the fibula is straight, I use these uh, tricks uh, to, to make it move. But in fact, it's working also for scapula as for uh, DCIA, no problem at all. So I rotate everybody to make it match as good as I can. Yes, this way. Um, and obviously I just need to make sure that I have my 7 centimeter. Obviously here it's far more than enough. So I need to make it a little bit less. Let's make sure by, you know, um, hitting control and making sure. So I have even too much right now. I still have all the distal part of the malleole, but still control and C, that is better. So I just don't need a lot of pedicles, so I just go there to really doesn't need any ankle stability. And then I just put my fibula again very well until I'm happy. View and top. Uh, that is really good for some rotation. Okay, now I'm happy. So this is very nice. Uh, the last thing is to understand where you not want your pedicle. If you do that, the pedicle will be in buccal aspect because my mandible is like that, right? So that will be the buccal aspect and it will be compressed by the skin of the chin, of the cheek, sorry. So I want my pedicle inside on the lingual aspect. So. I just do again the center of geometry just to make sure yeah that's a little bit better and I rotate on Y just to place everybody in the good position so basically that will be the septum so I think there I'm okay I will have my my skin paddle still on this space uh, to, to, to put the to, to reconstruct everything and obviously I need again to move my fibula to match as I can everything. So view and top. Yes, a little bit there. And it's beautiful. Okay. Now I'm ready. I always triple triple check and do everything I can just to make sure for, for the patient everything is perfect. Yes, far more than enough. Okay. <clears throat> so now <clears throat> uh, I need to link this guy to the armature. But you also need to keep a, a complete fibula to design your surgical guide. So in fact, I need three fibula. So I hit Shift D there, and I'm going to link this guy by, by, by holding Shift button and right click to this bone. So then I hit Control P and I go uh, set parent to bone. Okay, then I go again to the regular fibula, the zero one, and I hit shift D again. So now it's a fibula zero two, and I shift control, uh, control P, and I link that to the bone. So I have now my uh, uh, first fibula, my second fibula, and my fibula that stay here. So I just grab everybody. Uh, so basically everybody I have in the in the scene. And I go to my mandible, that uh, my ruler protractor, and I just move everybody to match this guy. Okay. But it's very important to understand you have to move everybody, otherwise it's going to be a problem. 
and you will need to, to do some manual movement and that is not precise enough, okay? All right, so that here I'm ready. So I just select until I have the zero, the one of the surgical, and then hit H, and like that I have the two fibula on the field. Yes, and not the fibula of the surgical guide, the zero, zero, 001. Okay, so now I'm just going to match this armature to my ruler protractor here. So without you know seeing everything else, so I'm just going to go there, and then a perpendicular angle to go there. Pretty decent, it matched very well. Uh, again, just to make sure, yes, well, it's going to be okay. Then I, I move the other one, so something like that here. Perpendicular plane, something like that here. Big movements, obviously. I need a little bit of finesse there, and that's good. Okay. Okay, then it's time to see uh, if it's matching the inferior border in this case pretty well and if it's matching with the mandible that is reconstructed. So obviously now I need some match in the external aspect first. So let's see with some rotation. So obviously here I'm not happy. I, I don't have my, uh, my border perfectly in match. So I'm going to just hide this one to make sure that by rotation it cannot you know be better Control alt space and i rotate by y y and i rotate perfectly my my guy here so that's not bad at all very nice but i need to move this guy too so i select everyone plus the fibula obviously like that everybody move the same way and that I think will be enough to match. That's pretty good. R Y Y. Yes, that's good. So now I remove again the second one. So moving here, yes. Moving here, yes. Moving here, yes. With uh, with the fibula visible on it. Okay. I just you know hide the other one and make sure that now my fibula you know match as i like as i want my chin and as you can see it's extremely precise too that's a good job there um yes that's really something that is really nice for the patient Control alt and space and rotate by yy and see maybe i can have more bone contact by a small rotation but knowing that each rotation I do will change the connection between the fibula and so it needs to be really well balanced. Uh, but in fact, I, I'm very happy. You see, I mean, uh, the match is really perfect with the size of the shin and I will have a, a decent shape of the mandible. That's a, a very good shape. Uh, I can put back <clears throat> this mandible and you see the shin will be pretty well match that's perfect uh, so now you need to understand a last thing is that uh, the plane in between so the plane here needs to to we need just to put two plane uh, to double the plane so I just double it by shift D here like that this one of this plane will go forward of this fragment to cut it and the other one will go backward of this one to cut it and the two cut line will make the two fragment touch otherwise if you cut only with one plane there will be a gap between the fragment and this is why it's not precise enough so i just hit control i space you see the plane change and uh, G, Z, Z, and now I can, you know, make the plane move really nicely. And so I artificially make, you know, half of the movement with one of them and half of the movements, so, sorry, J, Z, Z, with the other one until I see the space touching like that. Okay, maybe less. 
Yes, I think that's good. Enough. Yes, I'm happy with that. And so now, we'll save every time. Huh? Obviously, it's a, it's a complex situation here. So now I will just uh, move, put my fibula back. Uh, what I like to do is with um, new position that I'm happy to is to save it. So you can go to pose library new and hit the plus here and you will have had new a pose library and if you hit that it can uh, hold the position. For example what I mean is if you if you cancel all the rotation alt r everything is straight again. Okay so like you lost everything but if you put back the loop everything is uh, saved. So that is very, very nice just to make sure everything is good. Um, so basically what's happened now is you need to cut your fragment of uh, fibula. So I make all the plane visible again. So there will be the plane one, that's not this one. Yeah, that's the bigger one, the plane one here and probably... Hmm. Okay, so not this one, this one. And now you have everybody so you select this one, uh, boolean and two difference because there is two plane. You cut with this one and don't forget you cut with the distal one here. Apply, apply. Then you just select everything here by control plus. Okay, it's done. And P and you select. Tab, select this one and X you delete. Then boolean again difference copy this plane obviously and don't forget this proximal plane here apply apply same tab so you select the fragment the intermediate fragment only p selection tab you go back and you delete this object and obviously everything here okay better to have a quick look before so the four plane are, are you know i put them back here uh, I put back the mandible just to make sure and that is pretty awesome it's extremely good so I know my, pa my patient will have a very nice reconstruction here for his chin is pretty decent the shape of the mandible is really nice it's too much in the lingual on purpose um, and there it's matched perfectly so I can put a nice recon bar. So what I do is I select that and I export that and 3D print that like that we can bend our plate on that. And you see how there is absolutely no space and the precision is really nice. Okay, so I'm happy with this guy. Uh, I can put also the mandic ball back so I know there will be a spur but you see there is nearly nothing. So it will be nearly nothing and you can burr that uh, during the surgery, but the shape is really nice. Okay. And so now what I need to do is to link the plane with my uh, fibula. And like that, when I put everybody straight again to create my, my, my surgical guide of the fibula, sorry, not this one, but the plane, so it was the plane zero one, yeah, and the plane zero three, this one. Um, everybody follow and I already have the plane to just create my guide. So now the only thing is that you need to link <clears throat> you need to link this plane to this bone as this plane, right? So what I do usually is you see the plane in between have some uh, boolean to the armature that I apply always apply and apply uh, and, I, and I just joined everybody. So for example uh, I'm gonna just join this guy to this guy to this guy. So control join. Everybody is inside now. And this guy to this guy to this guy. Control join. And everybody is here. And so basically when I move, you see them, the plan follow. And so when I will have my amateur visible again, so I just go to the amateur and she, uh, alt H. And I hit Alt R, everybody move. And I have all my plan beautifully designed again. Okay? So that's how I do. And there is probably a lot of different technique, but I, I find it being the, the most efficient and straightforward. So now you see there is a problem is that it's a full object. So you need again to split the plane. Okay? 
So well, that's really easy to do. It's just a, you know four dots. So you go here, and I just grab one, two, uh, th three here, and four, and I just hit P, and that's one. Then one, two, three, and carefully four, and I hit P, and that's the second one. And I like that I had my three object one, okay, with really nice plan. And the same here, so one, two, three, four, P selection, and now one, two, three, and four, P, and that's it. So I have everything I need, okay? And now the last thing, because you can see before creating the surgical guide, is that I need to move this guy a little bit forward. So I select the planes and move with my object here, and I just move as Y uh, with the regular fibula I have, you see? Uh, and I'm just not going to move this guy forward, obviously, because I'm going to be too close from the, this part, but I'm going to move this guy here, so backward, so G, Y, and I move a little bit, and you see it's matching still beautifully with the fibula. Obviously, there is a small change in the in the shape, but as you can see, small modification like that is still perfectly fine. And now I'm just seeing to make sure that my two fragments have some space in between, and as you can see, it's really nice. And here we go. Now I can hide this guy, hide this guy, hide this fragment, hide this fragment. And I have my fibula with the plane I need um, to design my surgical guides. So I know my pedicle is, sorry, here. So I know my lateral face obviously is this one with the upper aspect of the fibula here. So I'm perfectly fine and I will create a surgical guide here. The surgical guy now um, will be something you do whatever you want, in fact, but again, me, I have a, a way to do it now. So I create, it's exactly the same. I create a cube. I find it more easy than anything else. Uh, and I'm going to extrude this cube. Not, even, not, not really extrude because I don't want to have multiple face. So I'm just going to do GY. And like that, I have a surgical guide that's going to match. And not too far away here because I don't want to, you know, open the ankle until the, the end. And what I'm going to do is the same trick. I'm going to use the loop to create multiple space if needed and to modify it. And that's pretty, pretty it, in fact. So basically what I do is then... First, I you know hide uh, all the the different plane, and I trying to match the fibula first. So I'm going into this view, this view, and and with dots, and obviously I'm trying to make everything a little bit better. And so I start by selecting with the C one angle, and like that, I trim that to the bone, plus a little bit of thicker aspect to make it robust then I do the same with this line and obviously I'm going to shrink it there and then as this line because I'm going to make it there because there will be the um, the septum uh, where the skin perforators come through here so I need to apply not on the same time it's very very important and let's see exactly if it's beautiful so you see the fibula has a small curve so you can match it if you want if you want to be more elegant here for example i can do that that's fine better to have a, a strong aspect ah, i did a mistake by being too far away so it's better to have so gz a little bit more DZ of surgical guide here because that's a space where you know you're not going to compress anything. 
one, that's better. Two red, a little bit less, and that's fine here. And then all of this extra here, I'm gonna reduce them. Something like that will be, I think, fine. And then you can see that this extra here can be a little bit more. And now I think it's pretty decent. I have a good amount of bone everywhere, uh, of uh, surgical guide, sorry, everywhere. Maybe it's too big here. I don't need uh, on the top view to have this amount here of surgical guide. So I can maybe, you know, compress it a little bit. But again, uh, you're doing exactly like you want. And I find it very, very nice. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Maybe you see still a lot and lot and lot of uh, un unnecessary guide here. That very fast became something that is necessary. Okay, and that will be nice. So let me just find the last thing is to go and grab all of them here and make the inferior aspect flat as the superior aspect, as you can see here, grabbing the superior crest edge of the fibula, and that's the case everywhere. That is just uh, the flat edge here. So I'm happy. Okay, like that is nice. And so now I just need to impact my plan and it's done. Uh -huh. So when you do that in the same, you know, number of, uh, of, uh, of um, so I need just to go to the fibula, yeah. Okay, so that's my four plane and I see I have enough of a guide there. But you see it's the same problem if I impact this, um, Plan here, I just cut completely my guide, huh? and I don't want that. So, Boolean difference with my fibula. And I remove this guy. I remove by H, you see? Now you have your guide, and you just control and select every one of that, and that's it. So now I have my surgical guide design. So the same problem here, just remove it. So it's pretty beautiful. I know it's gonna clip to the fibula on its own. It's perfectly fine. And so you just need to move this plan to cut enough of the guide, but not all of it. So what I like to do is to grab this plane, go into plane, grab one face, control alt space, I design, you know, the good rotation like that for it. And then I grab everything. So for example, this space. And if you eat GYY, I suggest you can see that you can trim the plane that's staying with the same axis. So here I have enough of my guide and I need to do the same here, obviously. So now it's GXX and you see GXX to the infinity is exactly in the same line, okay? And so GXX, and now I trim, but not all my guide, and I know I'm good, okay? I know it will be okay. And I can put my one centimeter uh, um, a blade here. I have more than the space I need. All the space I need, you see, more than two centimeter to put my, my blade, so that's fine. And you go like that with all the plane. So select one, control add space, then control the face you want to trim. So for example, this one. Uh, so GXX, I trim it there. GXX. But you see, huh? still always to the infinite, the good match. So I think that will be enough, yes. And then the inferior border, GY, GYY, up. Yes. And it's still robust, okay. And this one, Control Alt Space. 
beautiful, up, GYY, here, G, X, X, careful, yeah, okay, no, it's still good. Okay, I was looking just to make sure that, you know, all of my axes are good, that it looks like it's beautiful, right? It's really going to the infinity, infinity uh, uh, with, with a good uh, direction, okay? Yeah, the same everywhere. So again, uh, I'm cutting just what I think I need. And the last one. Nearly done. Courage. Shift, uh, Control, uh, Alt, Space. And then the one inferiorly. So D Y Y up. Yeah, maybe it's not the good one. I will maybe be better. Uh, no, it's pretty pretty. F no, maybe I would like to cut this way. So G. X, X. Yes, that's better. Maybe a little more G, X, X. And then J, X, X. Yes. And that will be nice. But you see, that's maybe too small. So G, Y, Y. And J X X again. Yes, that's maybe better to have a better slot for the blade. Okay. So pretty it, pretty much. Um, and then I just need my screw. So I just go to a previous one it was used, and I duplicate it like that. I don't use it anymore in case huh? I don't remember exactly what I did, but usually it's fine. You can. And rotate by Z, rotate uh, like that. And so what I like to do uh, is to put a lot of them um, in the bone I will not use. So this one. So obviously this bone is the bone that will be removed. And just impact slightly the head. And then I just do duplication and move by Y. And normally that will be good. Yes. So I have two screws here. It's enough. And then I just do the same for the opposite side. So here. OK. It's the same. Huh? We'll see if you use it. But uh, G by Y. Okay, and then let's duplicate that and put one screw in this small fragment because that is very, very robust um, to have a fragment that can be uh, used like that because this triangle of bone will never, 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 never uh, be used. So I can put definitely a screw inside. Uh, that's maybe the best screw placement ever, never done huh, by uh, other technique, other professional, or whatever. And that's it. So you just need to move and being sure that it's not, you know, concerning for any uh, cutting parts. So that's the case here. And you're ready. So it's a big Boolean of difference there. So let's copy a lot of them. And let's go. So plane one, plane two, plane three, plane four. 
and then the screw so screw one screw two screw three and so on four and five and now let's apply everything making sure that everything is good apply 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 and remove the excess and let's see by hiding everyone else let's see and this is how you have a perfectly well planned surgical guide the screw the plan everything it's intact here it's robust everywhere the screw and inside and that's it so that is your fibula uh, surgical guide and basically guy when you um, put back your uh, fibula then you can see uh, everything is a uh, well match um, and if you want just to be really beautiful to prepare the surgery then you can switch the color for example of your bone or or your surgical guide do that the, the same uh, um, precision for everything and so basically that is uh, the end of the video i just want to 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 warn you about the difficult uh, learning curve uh, we we think you need at least a week of really training uh, five days is a minimum we in fact publish um, uh, uh, the training uh, course of this uh, technique um, and yes it, you need at least five days um, I, I, I think in really good hands you can do an, an, an awesome job extremely uh, precise for your patient and also taking in account all the difficulties and 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 um, and subtleties of the, of your surgery, you can obviously buy um, professional software. But in fact, uh, for the major uh, software you can buy, uh, you will not be able to uh, design your surgical guide. So I at least uh, now you can do it, even if you have um, a professional software to do the reconstruction faster. But at least you are now trained um, to do your own design and your own surgical guides. Uh, I really wish you all the best. Uh, take care and see you soon in another video.